Introduction to SCADA for PV Systems We will start off by listing the misconception about SCADA It's not something that was built based on magic nor voodoo nor a single piece of equipment block box a computer or something like internet or telecommunications. So what is SCADA then? SCADA is an acronym that stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. It is a system which is integrated, an integrated set of software, hardware, network, and control subsystems that work together to provide real-time visibility and control of a facility. Like in this tutorial, a PV or a photovoltaic power plant. In other words, it's just a centralized system that monitors and controls the entire plant. When we talk about SCADA, we can associate it, its functionality to the human nervous system, wherein it is a network of neurons whose main feature is to generate, modulate, and transmit information between all the different parts of the human body. You have your fiber optic and ethernet networks that acts like nerves and your sensors are value generators like meters and weather stations acts as eyes ears or skin and your grid controllers serves as the autonomic side of the nervous system then your operators or end users of the data set would be your brain and can then respond accordingly. Let's illustrate the SCADA elements for a photovoltaic power plant. In this basic diagram for a PV plant, attributes such as kilowatts, voltage, operating status, and alarms are being pulled from the inputs like what you have on the left your inverters and those data set are being transmitted to the SCADA server rack on the right through a fiber line via Modbus TCP this also shows the essential communication elements like communication module interfaces, as well as network switches. In addition, live data parameters such as irradiance, wind speed, ambient temperature, and all that relates to your weather station on the left are also being collected. Adding more functionality, such as controls, we now have grid controllers and relays that would enable the user to send set points and breaker operations. With those information now available on the SCADA server rack, you can also configure it to send those parameters out to the internet. Once this has been configured properly. Your data is now accessible anywhere and remote operators can now access the site remotely as from there we can transmit the data over the internet. In this slide, we can associate those equipments to their physical location in the PV plant, namely the operations and maintenance building at the right wherein we would typically place those SCADA servers and telecommunication equipments. Your array on the left, which are field devices that are located out in the field, 
like inverse, your solar panels, weather stations, and trackers. And you have your substation control building at the bottom where you have your relays and grid controllers. In this section, we will discuss briefly the core elements or aspects to be taken in consideration when putting up a functional SCADA system. First, we have engineering. When it comes to the core, engineering plays a big role as this involves balance of the plant, substation automation, as well as network and telecommunications. The ideal SCADA system should have an integrated data system, telemetry, and control systems for utility interconnections. This should also have the support for system owners and third-party data feeds using OPC, DNP3, Modbus, and other communication protocols. Nowadays, teleprotections and network security is becoming a standard. Your SCADA system should have a cybersecurity best practices using encryption, network VLAN segmentation, and permit by exception policies. When it comes to hardware considerations, a robust SCADA server rack is needed for large PV plants. Virtual machines are more suitable due to their flexibility and manageability. Grid controllers, PLCs are definitely needed for controls. As for the weather station, there's already a wide range of equipments you can choose from. If in case we need real-time automation, RTAC is the best way to go. If you have a large-scale PV plant, distance from the substation building where your equipments are should be considered as they will be connected to the inverters out in the field. This is where fiber line comes into play and are being terminated through the SCADA communications panel. Commissioning comes next, as this will be the foundation of your system's performance throughout your system's life cycle. You should have a good system acceptance testing procedure and monitor your power plant startup and lastly, compile your documentation and execute a formal handoff to your operations and maintenance team. On the subject of a software features, here we list down all the essential functions of the SCADA software. It should have a comprehensive alarm and event management system. For example, the SCADA system quickly notifies an operator that a batch of a product is showing a high incidence of errors. The operator then can pause the operation and view the SCADA system data via an HMI to determine the cause of the issue. On the historization, SCADA software that utilizes the power of SQL databases provides huge advantages. One big advantage of using SQL databases with a SCADA system is that it makes it easier to integrate into existing MES and ERP systems, allowing data to flow seamlessly through an entire organization. Historical data from a SCADA system can also be logged in a SQL database, which allows for easier data analysis through data trending. For controls, Ideally, we would need a fast acting and fault tolerant grid control systems. 
This should have features like closed loop curtailment, power factor, reactive power, and rump rate controls. As a summary, the main goal of this supervisory system is to monitor and control equipment within the PV plant. And its core functions are data acquisition, network data communication, data presentation, and lastly, controls. These are the four core functions of a SCADA system.